Hi everyone, welcome to the AWS Blogger. My name is John Meyer and today we're going to be talking about AWS Outposts. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that like and click subscribe. First, I'd like to introduce our guest today. He's known for his outstanding use of slide animation, one of the co-authors of the official study guide for AWS Certified Advanced Networking, Principal Developer Advocate for AWS Outposts, Matt Lewis. Matt? Hey, John. How's it going? Great. How are you? Yeah, pretty good. You know, working away. Lots going on. So glad to be here chatting with you today. Yeah, yeah, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, you sitting down with us and talking about AWS Outposts. So I'm going to jump right into it because we're we have this is a short video for us, uh, something really easily consumable for the audience. Um, you know, during reInvent 2019, AWS announced AWS Outposts. So you know, really, what is Outposts? Why did we build it as a service or an offering? Yeah, no, I I think. Um completely valid question you know we, we've been thinking about um aws regions and and of which we have many now i actually lose count on on the regions and availability zones that we have and a lot of customers were were asking for a piece of aws on premises so they wanted us to take the same technology the same um security the same uh services and offer that on premises and and the reason why customers were asking for that is um some customers have latency requirements where um, they need super low latency access to applications that are running in AWS. Uh, others have data sovereignty requirements or they need the data to operate in a specific geographic area. So what we basically did with Outposts is uh, we took the same technology as we use in a region. So um, think of the actual physical hosts themselves, the, the networking, all of the overlay um, components, the operational components that go into a region. We compartmentalized that and built it so that it can be deployed in a single rack or multiple racks. So what that basically allows us to do is take that rack and install it or deploy it at a customer's site and essentially extend the region or with the case of Outpost, we're extending an availability zone to your on-premises. So now basically what happens is you can use a VPC, same thing you would use in the region. So same uh, single pane of management, you know, API calls, uh, the console, et cetera, um, VPCs, are extended to the outpost. And when you deploy an EC2 instance, it's actually not running in an availability zone. It's running on a rack or multiple racks on premises. So it's actually pretty awesome. Um, I've been uh, in AWS a uh, you know, couple of years now, and uh, we've been thinking about this idea for a long time, and I'm super excited that it came to fruition. And um, as of December 3rd last year, you can actually order your own outposts if, um, if you like. So pretty awesome stuff. Nice, nice. So I appreciate the introduction there on what it is. Uh, I was super excited about it because I come from a traditional data center background. So this was something I'm like, oh man, I want to play around with this stuff. So I, I want to look at it, I want to learn a lot. So I jumped into uh, what is really the community internally to help out and learn as much as I can about it. Uh, so I'm going to jump right in with some some questions. And, you know, then it, we have some slides, we have some visualization, we actually have a walkthrough, like you can kind of uh, a 3D rendering of it that we can look at the rack then, so we're going to pull up. First of all, let's talk about, let's just jump in and talk about connectivity. Uh, I'm going to talk about, we can order an outpost, like you mentioned, from the AWS console. So let's pretend I ordered one, I've got it sitting on my dock, and it was delivered to my data center. What's next? What do I yeah. do next? Well, okay, so... Well, actually, um, there's a couple of steps before that that I want to call out that are that are super important. So, what will happen with an outpost is um, it will get built to the configuration that you ask for. So, um, and actually, I think um, we have one of the, one of the slides there. I think it's like slide three there. We've got about twenty different configurations in the AWS. Console. So, what will happen is you, there we go. You can go in and um, jump into the console, order an outpost and choose one of these pre-validated configs. So you'll notice here we've got a config for the first one in on the list here is a memory optimized large unit. So this is 11 R524X large um, 
hosts inside a rack. Um, the next is uh, general purpose of compute, uh, et cetera. So we've got some M5s, we've got seven M5s, and we've got three C5s. Um, in, in this deployment. So when you choose your outpost catalog, we'll actually build the outpost to that specification. And before we bring it on site, there's a couple of steps we need to do. So um, we will do a site assessment, which means some of our folks will um, come out to your data center and, and do a walkthrough. And the walkthrough is basically designed for us to say, um, hey, when we bring an outpost in here, is everything going to be okay? So the outpost is not something that we build on premises. So we don't turn up with a truckload of um, servers and install them into a rack of your um, choosing. We actually build it to spec and we'll then ship a fully built outpost. So it actually comes in a giant big crate. Um, if it's a single rack, we can have multi-rack up to 16 racks. But if we had a single rack, it would turn up in a big crate, we'd wheel it off the back of a truck, and we need to make sure that when we wheel it into the data center, we have the right um, ceiling clearance, we have the right place to put the outpost, the right seismic bracing, the right power, and the right connectivity. So once you've ordered the outpost, we'll do a site assessment, and we'll actually ask you for some additional details on the networking piece. So as you can imagine with outposts, uh, we're extremely reliant on the networking um, back to the region because it is an extension of an availability zone. So we'll ask you for a couple of different pieces. Um, one will be the LAN connectivity and LAN connectivity allows us to connect into your network and then there'll be the WAN connectivity piece. So how are you connecting back in through to the AWS region? And um, I think, uh, John, we've got a reference architecture in there as well. We can bring it up in a little bit where we kind of dive a little bit more around the, the LAN connectivity, but I think, um, Now's probably a good time. Let's jump into the, the virtual um, demo of the outpost. So we have a, a virtual demo, and, and this actually is, is going to be public uh, quite soon. So one of the things we realized uh, when we were at reInvent, and um, this is reInvent last year, so December 3rd, 2019, when we announced the general availability of outposts, uh, we realized folks wanted to see what an outpost looked like. So we had a rack there um, on the show floor. You could you could go and hug the the rack if you wanted to. But the issue we saw was we we have a whole bunch of different summits and and now we're doing a whole bunch of virtual things and uh, virtual events. Um, folks didn't really have a good mechanism to really take a nice close look at what an outpost actually looks like. So we've got this virtual demo here, and again, this will be public soon. Um, and uh, I think. Let's uh, just kind of open up the doors here. You'll notice it's kind of like an interactive uh, demo. So basically, if we want to zoom in a little bit there, John, on the front, we can see that uh, we've got our hosts, which are just to, uh, to the top and bottom of, of the network devices, which we'll talk to in a second. But basically, so we've got our physical hosts there. They've got connectivity through to the networking of the um, outpost. So this is all within the AWS managed sphere where we manage everything inside the rack. Hosts will connect to the, the networking switches and those networking switches will then connect through to your network via some patch panels. So um, if we want to just go down a little bit here, John. So in the center there, oh, a little bit too far. Uh, in the center there, you'll notice we've got two network devices. And so those network devices might look familiar if you're, if you're a networking person and have, have worked with physical network hardware before. And these are basically, when we talk about the outpost network device or outpost networking device, that's what we're referring to. So it's a set of switches that will do VLANing, LACP, physical connectivity, and also BGP. So it's basically a layer three switched or, or routed device. Um, and so what will happen is when we wheel the outpost on premises, you'll plug into the outpost from a power perspective, which we'll talk about in just a second, but um, also a physical connectivity perspective, and you'll actually connect through to a set of patch panels. And John, if we just go up to the top of the uh, top of the rack here. So when you plug into the rack or the outpost, you're actually plugging into a set of patch panels. And so the patch panel here is actually the demarcation. So you as a customer would manage anything north of the patch panel, and then AWS manages anything south of the patch panel from a networking perspective. So um, we can have uh, one gig, 10 gig, 40 gig, 100 gig, and we can do uh, one to 16, one gig or 10 gigs, or up to four 40 or 100 gig connections through to the outpost. Wow. And if we have multiple racks, each rack basically has its own independent connectivity as well. Yeah, pretty, pretty awesome stuff.
So a, a nice uh, availability there of, uh, you know, redundancy configuration in case of a failure uh, or support. Of yeah, we've got, so there's, that's why there's multiple devices. And so uh, we have a couple of diagrams um, that we can show in just a moment, but we basically have two different legs from connect from a connectivity standpoint to a single outpost rack. Um, actually, one thing that might be interesting on this, um, John, if you want to spin it around to the, the back of the rack here. I, I got to say, I really like this 3D thing of being able to spin around and take a look at it. I, I know there were some talks internally about something like this of you know maybe like a vr headset or something that you could take a look at it but that'd be cool i yeah. I, I do i mean where you could just grab some of the stuff and move it around but i really like uh this i think it's going to be uh nice if we put it on a big screen and people can kind of move around or touch the screen and move it so you know those are some pretty cool things yeah no th i think this really does kind of scratch that itch when you want to actually see the thing in real life yep. um it's pretty hard to take one of these and and ship it out to various locations. I'm still working on trying to get one uh, at, at my house. but we'll <laughs> Good luck with that. Maybe if not. you can get one at your house, let me know how you ordered it. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so what, actually what we're seeing here, uh, so you can see the power cable. Um, we can have uh, 5 kVA, 10 kVA or 15 kVA, depending upon how many hosts are in the rack. But that bar that you see in the center of the rack is actually what we call the bus bar. And so the bus bar is what's feeding the power to to the um, components inside. It's it's a little bit different compared to when you're actually building a singular rack. Um, you know, let's say you're in a data center and you're putting a whole bunch of hosts in a, in a rack. Um, you'll plug in a, a power cable into the back of each server. In this case, the bus bar and we've got the power power unit in the center there is basically providing power to to all of these servers. So it's actually pretty awesome stuff. Um, something that was different that I hadn't seen before. Um, uh, having worked in data centers and that sort of thing. Um, cool. So I think that's um, that's pretty much it for the, the virtual tour here. I mean, pretty cool stuff. You can kind of zoom around there. And, and we're hoping to have this actually public pretty soon so anyone can jump onto our uh, Outpost page and, and check out the, um, the Outpost itself in a virtual format. Um, yeah. Uh, once again... Matt, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. I uh, really appreciate it, everybody. Uh, I'll have this posted as, uh, as soon as possible. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment on the videos. And I'll try to get them back to Matt in a respectable time. Thanks, Matt. Sounds good. Thanks, John.